Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on surgery short case revision for thyroid examination. The thyroid examination mainly consists of two parts, which are examination of the thyroid gland and examination of the thyroid status, which include examination of the eyes, the hands and also the legs. So on general, the patient is sitting down on a chair and adequate exposure is the whole neck down to both their clavicles. First, we start off with inspection of the neck. So this is done from the front of the patient. We look for any presence of swelling at the neck and if there is any swelling, we have to comment on the side of the swelling, the size, shape, number of swelling, surface, whether there is any redness of the skin, any scars, and any neck veins noted. See whether the lower body of the swelling is visible or not. And then we have to ask the patient to do two things which is the first thing is to give them a glass of water. We ask them to drink one sip of water. So we see whether the swelling moves upwards with deglutition, which is confirming that it is a thyroid swelling. And next, we ask the patient to protrude their tongue and see if the, thyroid, the swelling moves with the protrusion of the tongue. This is done for midline swelling. Some cases where the swelling moves with protrusion of the tongue are such as thyroglossal duxis. So next, after done with the inspection, we'll move on to palpation. And this, we have to go behind the patient and start to palpate the neck swelling. So remember to palpate one side by one side. So we start with the left side and then move to the right side. One hand supporting and the other hand feels. So we have to palpate for the temperature and any tenderness noted on the patient's face. Side, size, shape of the swelling. This is to confirm with our inspection findings the size we have to measure using our measuring tab and also the surface whether it is smooth and diffuse or multi-nodular or solitary nodule margin consistency whether it's soft firm or hard and feel whether we can get below the swelling or not so this is done by asking the patient to swallow again while we palpate for the inferior border of the swelling fixation to the skin and sternocleidomastoid muscle so if we see that there is a swelling at the left side of the neck, then we ask the patient to turn their head to the right side while our hand is pushing at the right side. So they are turning their head to the right side against the resistance of our hand. And this will tense the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the left side so we can feel whether the swelling is fixed to the muscle or not. And also, after palpating for the thyroid swelling, then we can palpate the cervical limb nodes as well to look for lymphadenopathy. So after doing this, then we go to the front of the patient and we palpate for trachea deviation. Also, there are some special tests for thyroid examination, which include the Berry's sign, where positive Berry's sign is when there is absence of carotid artery pulsation on palpation. So if there is absence of carotid pulsation, it suggests for malignancy. Next is the Cochus test, where we apply pressure on the trachea by slightly pushing on the lateral lock. A positive cautious test is when there is shrider, where there is noisy breathing, and this suggests narrowing of the trachea. Pemberton sign is done by asking the patient to raise both their arms over their head with the arms touching their ears and maintain for 2-3 to three minutes, shown in this picture over here. So, the arms are supposed to touch the ears. And a positive Pemberton sign would be when there is plethora noted seen in the second picture. There is flushing of the face. So this will suggest for a thoracic inlet obstruction, which can be due to a retrosternal goiter, where there is enlarged thyroid gland. After do done with the palpation, then we move on to percussion. So percussion will be for retrosternal extension, where we percuss the manubrium of the mediastinum from below to upwards. This is to look for, to look for retrosternal extension of the thyroid gland. Auscultation, we use the bell of the stethoscope and listen over the upper pole of the thyroid glands to listen for breath. And after done with the examination of the thyroid gland, we then move on to examination of the thyroid status. So we check the peripheral hands, look for any signs of thyroid toxicosis, such as palma sweating, fine tremor of the hands, where we, this is done where we ask the patient to lift 
their hands and we put we put a paper on their hands. So this is to detect for any fine tremor. Palma erythema, thyroid acropaki, and also check the pulse for any tachycardia or atrial fibrillation where there is irregularly irregular pulse. Look at the eye for eye signs such as proptosis. Proptosis is done by looking from above of the patient. We stand at the back and we look at their eyes. Look from above to see whether there is any bulging of the eyeballs. Lid retraction where there is visible upper sclera where I will show a picture of it later on. Esophthalmos where there is visible inferior limbus. Chemosis, lid like and ophthalmoplegia can be done by doing the hatch test. So this is a picture showing a lid retraction where there is visible upper sclera and esophthalmos is visible inferior limbus which is abnormal. So besides the eye signs and the hands, other things that we can see is to look at the leg for any pre-tibial mesoderma and also check for proximal myopathy and test the reflexes such as knee jerk reflex. So how do we give a full diagnosis? Thyroid swelling is divided into solitary versus multinodular. So this is a table showing the differential diagnosis for both. Solitary nodule, we can think of graft disease, which is diffuse swelling. Thyroid adenoma, it could be a dominant nodule of multinodular goiter. Thyroid cyst or thyroid carcinoma. Whereas multinodular thyroid swelling, we can think of toxic multinodular goiter if there are thyrotoxicosis signs thyroid carcinoma and colloid nodules. So during presentation, we can say that my diagnosis is solitary or multinodular thyroid swelling, most probably due to which cause, depending on the clinical findings. Next, we might be asked on how would we like to approach for this patient's thyroid swelling. And the investigation that we can do are this. So we always answer in this sequence. First, we do blood tests first, such as thyroid function tests to check the TSH level, the T3 and T4 levels. So expected findings for hyperthyroidism would be low TSH and high T3 and T4. And we can also check for autoantibodies if we are suspecting for graft disease, especially when there is a diffuse thyroid swelling. After blood tests, we can do ultrasound of the neck and also find needle aspiration and cytology, FNAC. This is done to rule out neoplastic cause. That's all for this video. Thank you.